It's Saturday, January 8th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. It's a beautiful bluebird day after a lot of rain and snow here in Northern California, and it's time for an Orville update. Let's go take a look. As we approach the Bidwell Bar Marina and the lake level of six, 726 feet, we can see the boat still way down in the canyon, but the water level beginning to rise to the entry of some of the new boat ramps. I want to thank special guests James Good and Christy Barden for filming that neat opening sequence. They use James' uh, Apple phone, and I'm using the new Google Pixel 6 phone for this. Descending out of 2,600 feet for our view of Oroville today. We'll pause it right there and take a quick look at the lay of the land. Here on the left is the two inlets to the Hyatt power plant and the big news here at Oroville is the Hyatt power plant is back up and operating for the first time since the water level dropped down below 620 feet. The Hyatt power plant, the water level was too low for the Hyatt power plant to operate at all. The water couldn't even get into these inlet penstocks with enough head pressure to properly operate the turbines at the Hyatt power plant. So they got one turbine back up and operational right now, only putting out about 30 megawatts. They've got six turbines total, capability of about 750, 750 megawatts of electricity if they're all up and running. Remember during the emergency, uh, the one of the many unfortunate design concepts of the original Orville setup had the power lines coming from the power plant located here, actually the turbines are located right underneath the dam, but the power lines came out of here and they went across the main spillway and emergency spillway and were threatening to get undermined during the emergency. And so after the $1 billion rebuild of the main spillway and emergency spillway, one of the additional things they did is relocated these power lines so that they fire off down this direction and cross the thermalito diversion pool down here well below the spillways and then back tie back into the grid right here and over here so now with the hyatt power plant operating the thermalito diversion pool downstream is kept at a very specific elevation for proper operation of the hyatt power plant and then beyond that you can see the feather river the thermalito fore bay and the thermalito after bay the after bay used to raise the water temperature of some of the diverted water just enough for the rice farmers downstream to be able to use that water and then return it back to the Feather River. What I wanted to show here, this interesting structure right here, we've talked about this before. This is something that uh, the whole state is going to have to readdress here in the future. This was an attempt years ago to build an additional spillway out of the Oroville Reservoir. This main spillway uh, has a elevation of about 850 feet, which corresponds to the, roughly to the flood control level where they want to keep the level of Oroville at during the flood season before they let it rise all the way up to the top of 900 feet during the end of the rainy season here in California. Most reservoirs and most engineers like Folsom Reservoir, for example, are considering, well, Folsom already has a second spillway, a lower spillway, in order to evacuate water out of these reservoirs quicker, earlier, with advances in weather technology and forecasting technology and changes in the extremes of these weather events that come through the state. They can get this, they can evacuate the water out quicker than having to wait until it comes all the way up to 850 feet and then use the main spillway here. So that'll be something for the future of Oroville, a second possible spillway. I don't know if it'll happen here. Don't know where it's gonna happen. And then of course we have the emergency spillway with its stair-stepped RCC pattern over here on the right and then the secant cutoff wall at the far end of this emergency spillway and then the idea of the design is the water just rolls out onto the dirt once again and down into the 
thermalito diversion pool, again, only to be used in the event of an emergency if the water tops 901 feet. Meanwhile, we got the water level just coming up to some of the new boat ramps here by the emergency spillway, but still a long way to go before we even get close to using the main spillway here at Orville. So after all our storms here, DWR did a uh, early snow report here at the Phillips Snow Survey Station. Now these survey stations are located all throughout the state, but Phillips is a one that they use in the press quite a bit off of Highway 50 up in the High Sierra. And back here on December 30th, they measured 78 and a half inches of snow with a snow water equivalent of an incredible 20 inches. That's why we call this Sierra concrete. There's so much water content in this snow here in the Sierras that once it freezes, it's concrete. So that gave them a 202% of average snow water content for the, that location for that date. Statewide, the snowpack at that date was 160% of average. 20 inches in 20 inches out of 80 inches. Normally when we think of snow, we think uh, 10 to 12 inches of snow is worth about one inch of water. Well, this is about four inches of snow worth one inch of water. Good news. But unfortunately, the long range forecast shows the next seven days from here on the 8th and 9th on to be dry, possibly the next two weeks to be dry as high pressure takes over our local weather Meanwhile, so the drought continues here in California. Here on the left is the, the, way, the way they currently are calling the drought. But compare that to November 16th, it's improved. The situation is improved considerably. Here's a look at some of the other reservoirs throughout the state. The one bright spot is Folsom Reservoir, 138% of his historical average to date. In fact, they're letting some water out of the new spillway out of Folsom Lake to make room for flood capacity at Folsom Lake. The rest of the reservoirs, well, Lake Goreville, 77% of historical average to date, only 41% of capacity. Lake Shasta, only 53% of historical average, only 32% of capacity. And some of the other reservoirs around the state. So we'll continue our left-hand pattern around the uh, complex here. We'll fire off down over the emergency spillway and down the main spillway. That main spillway, remember, is about 300 feet wide and about 3,000 feet long and drops over 400 feet in elevation down to the Thermalito Diversion Pool down below. And here you can see the large dentates they had to rebuild to help disperse and diffuse the water, take some of that energy out of the water before it hits the Thermalito Diversion Pool. You can still see some of the scouring on the rocks down below from the original blowout. And they've done a lot of work re-terracing all of this land here around the main spillway with lots of access into the drain system so they can monitor and make sure that the drain system remains fully operational underneath the main spillway. And here we can get, here's the uh, original, pause that right there. Here's the original tunnels right here, the train tunnels that they used to, uh, and diversion tunnels that they used to build when they built the Oroville Dam. And this is now the outlet to the Hyatt Power Plant located right there. And that's where the level of this Thermalito diversion pool needs to be kept at such a precise level for the operation of this power plant, of this power plant. And of course, here's your green spot right here. Look at that, it's already turning green even though the water level is <laughs> only up to 726 feet. That's just a natural occurrence that occurs every year at the Oroville Dam and drives the conspiracy kooks absolutely bananas. So that's the view of the Oroville Spillway here for Saturday the 8th of January at 726 feet and rising slowly. We desperately need more rain and snow, continuous in the High Sierra and here in Northern California in order to fill this reservoir completely up. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially over on Patreon that make this content possible. 
keeps fuel in these airplanes to make these reports possible. See you here.